Hello and welcome. In the next part of uh, harnessing atmospheric um, electricity, I will focus on the subject how to convert high voltage into low voltage for the usage of um, any of our appliances we have in use today. The problem I will focus specifically is that you have very, very high voltage, but you have almost no current. So we will definitely not be able to drive a load directly from the high voltage, so we need to find means to convert this um, energy into um, a level where we can use it with our appliance. However, we are not talking about AC here, we have only direct current. That means we need to convert this direct current to alternating current in order for us to use this energy to step it down in a transformer and to convert it. And I will show you a couple of ways what to look for and how we can optimize that. I want to go through some of the fundamentals of what you actually should be already aware of about capacitance, about breakdown voltage and I want also give you this reference. There's already the um, original tes um, um, patent from Tesla of radiant energy is already providing information of how to do it. However, it's done only in, in simple schematics so that you have only a rough um, outline of how to do it, but you don't have any specifics. And what I want to do here is I want to go into the specifics. So. We have, we have this um, Wimhurst machine in here. So, so one of the fundamentals which is obvious is that these two capacitors need to charge. So the charge takes time and depending on the breakdown voltage between the electrodes, it will have a specific frequency until it breaks down. So if we go to a low value, let's start it. Not sure if you can see it. It flashes fairly quick and if I increase this one now, let's see that, you can hear it, I'm not sure if you can see it very well, I will get a, a close-up. We have a strong light here on this side and we have only invisible on that side. Now if I increase it even further, let's do this, see if that works. So it's, it's fairly strong now going through. So with a strong smell of ozone. I can also say that it's impossible to measure that because the current here in that system is so low that it cannot even drive um, a voltage meter. So I have done that, that's not working. So we have to use the guesswork of the breakdown voltage between the distance, which I will mark. And I will go now in the next phase how we gonna increase actually the potential in terms of capacitance to have a um, breakdown voltage which gives us a lower voltage for the breakdown but with much more current. So for better visibility I have now connected high voltage wires to an additional breakdown where I can specifically uh, measure distance between the electrodes and a breakdown and we can uh, conduct our experimentation on this extension to my additional breakdown. I'm adding now as um, additional capacitance this high voltage capacitor in between the electrons that means I store more energy and have to reach this energy level first in terms of voltage from the capacitor 
in order to reach the big tone watch. This is about three and a half millimeter um, here on my spark gap. It's roughly around 10,000 volt it requires and this is a very very small one has only, only uh, around um, 10 to 50 picofarad. So if I look at the frequency if I start that now see if you can see that depending on how fast I turn the wheel either from once per second or we're twice twice per second so there is the relationship of how fast I do this so also the sparks are fairly small so what you can expect now if I energize that it will take much longer for a spark to appear but the spark will be much brighter the frequency is much lower the spark is much brighter is much stronger it has much more current. So this is now a short demonstration for you guys here in YouTube about what I'm conducting. The um, follow-up now in this video will be reserved to my members and I hope you all join me watching this video on my website as gold member. Thank you. Thank you.